It's finally Apple Vision Pro Week here in Australia. It goes on sale this Friday. So let's take a look at the next era of computing. Or is it? Well, you can't not address the elephant in the room, and that is what you look like wearing the Vision Pro. So let's make it very clear. Anyone you see walking in the streets wearing this? Frankly, anyone you see currently in this era sitting in a cafe with this, I think it's showing off. If you're not understanding that this is a personal, essentially private use product, then you're doing it for showboating. And I think that's the biggest challenge Apple has is people want to show themselves on Instagram or whatever wearing this thing to show off. They're just doing it for the clicks and views. They're not even actually pondering what this device is really for. So let me address the fact that I think I look ridiculous. And I'm okay with that because I've only worn this in front of people when they've been filming me or when I've been about to show them how to use it. And I think that's exactly how it should be. This thing is $6,000, but it may well be worth every cent, but not for everyone. So, look, the basics of this are very simple. First and foremost, there, are, there is the ability, as I take off the, the broad parts of it, there is the ability to put lenses on here if you wear glasses. Now, I do wear glasses for reading, but here's the thing. The Apple Vision Pro lenses, or the requirement for lenses, starts at a 0.75, I believe. Apparently, mine are only 0.5, so many more years of eyesight degradation to come. And these two lenses here, as you look through them, each contain a OLED screen which has more pixels than the 4K TV in your lounge room. It's immense. And that is the number one selling point of the Vision Pro, the pure and utter quality. Let's just talk about fit and finish here for a minute and I'll bring in my travel case. This is the Vision Pro travel case, very hard to see. It is an enormous case and I've already seen other people, mate of mine, uh, Stephen bought, the, uh, bought a travel case from Amazon, a third party one, and it's, it's smaller, it's thinner and that's a good thing because I don't even know if I could kind of fit that into my luggage. Uh, when I travel. So I'm not sure about that. That's, that's a bit of a problem alone. But there are two bands for Apple Vision Pro. This is the kind of stock standard one. I'll take the power cord off for the moment. This is your stock standard woven band. And it is, it's a very nice looking band. It's, it's reasonably comfortable to wear. But here's the problem I have with it. It kind of, it kind of, you want to sense, you really want to have it down, down here, but it really needs to be up here to give you the right fit. And I'll get onto that in a minute. And frankly, after a little while, I find that if you're going to use it for an extended period, you are probably better off. And the simple tab release, it's like they've done something just as good as they've done with the Apple Watch to make these uh, releasable and changeable. I think, to be honest, this is actually probably a better headband for you to use if you're someone that thinks you're going to use it for reasonably long periods of time. So let's put that one on and I'll show you how that looks instead. So this is more of a you know traditional Velcro style uh, fit uh, and so you can adjust where it sits. And the reason for that, the reason I like this is because I get a lot, when I, when I turn the Vision Pro on, um, what it does is it registers whether or not it can, it can see you or whether it's working or not. But I get a lot of times it says, move it up. And so what I end up doing is, you know, putting it up and I feel like it's sitting on my, on my cheekbone here. And so I actually like having the, the kind of strap across the head, bringing it up, which I think gives me the, the generally the right fit uh, for the product. But these are a fantastic little simple tab to pull and release to interchange the two different types of bands. This is definitely a better band just to show people and, and interchange with people if you're showing it around. Number one thing I said when I first tried Vision Pro a year ago at Apple headquarters was <clears throat> that the, the quality of the pass-through was unbelievable. And I actually want to walk back on that. I want to take a step back and after a week of using this say, the pass-through is excellent, it's um, responsive, uh, it's very fast, that means, so when something happens in the world around you, you see it in that same time. <clears throat> but it's not high resolution. It doesn't really feel, you know, even 4K in that sense. So I just want to clarify that the screens emit the most remarkable quality for the graphics, the icons and everything that happens. But the actual pass-through is a big step down from reality. So while 
for some reason, and maybe it was the lighting in the room where my first demo was, uh, for some reason I felt like it was real. Maybe I was overwhelmed. I think the quality of the pass through is excellent, but it is not enough to make you feel like you're actually looking at the real world. Uh, control wise, it is remarkable. I'm going to turn it on again so that I can actually do a few things and talk you through what I'm doing um, so that you can see kind of how you control things on the Vision Pro. Because that's probably its most remarkable um, trait is it is it is remarkably easy to learn, to control, to manage, uh, even when you hand it over to someone as a guest user. So this is my room office studio. And yes, the TV flickers, that's basically what the cameras do is they try and adjust. So you'll notice when I'm looking here, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't kind of focus on that, so it flickers a lot. But if I stare at the TV, it tries very hard to adjust to the refresh rate. Now, you wouldn't have a TV on like with this on, so that's just kind of ridiculous. So single press of the digital crown, and I've got the menus in front of me, your basic main menu, which is very Apple-esque. And it is simply a pinch and swipe to move through the menus, and my God, it is so easy to do. You simply look at an app. Now, let me be clear. I'll move that over there for a minute. Let me bring up the home menu again. I am doing nothing with my hands. And if you just, I'll go to the overlay. And if you just look at the icons, you'll notice that I'm highlighting through the middle row. See, free from, safari, photos, notes, app store. See how they highlight? That's me looking with my eyes. So my eyes look, so you don't actually have to turn your head. You just look with your eyes where you want to go and then you click. So I've opened, up, um, I've opened up photos, let's look at music and simply tap. Now I don't have to bring my hand up to tap, I can just have it on my leg if I was sitting on a lounge or whatever I like. And I, I can do multiple things at multiple times, so I can, and I can zoom out, look at this, so I can zoom out of my photo library, pinch and zoom kind of thing in, in a new way. And then when I look at another app, it comes back into focus. Now down the bottom of every single app is this little line, very similar to the bottom line on an iPhone 15 uh, or, or back to kind of the iPhone 10 where you'd swipe up. That line is what you stare at that and see a highlight. I can stare at the cross, that's to close, stare at that, that is to move. So when I pinch, if I highlight that, I pinch, I move the windows around. That's how you arrange the windows to suit. And this is how you create a multi-windowed environment. So I can open Safari, I can look down to the bottom, I can go up here, look at the top of the tabs. And I can go across to, to EFTM and there we go, we've got a browser, very easy to use. I can go across now and look up again at the top and go to Nine News and here's all of the Nine News. So the content is very easy to find and again, if I want to keep my browser window open, I might put it here. Now that, I mean, I'm not going to really use the browser over there, but I'll tell you something I've really enjoyed and I haven't seen many people talk about this, is TikTok. It's pretty cool in Apple Vision Pro. You see Apple, the window, uh, it's reportedly it stopped. It, and then I open up the comments and they appear on the side and I can actually keep that as my kind of TikTok window and I can just- A quick update. Here, like this. A quick hey, update on Red Lobster. Read uh, last week, you might remember we talked about its recent bankruptcy file. Honestly, it's probably one of the coolest integrations of an app and you can resize that by staring at the corner. That's a lot of TikTok, so we're gonna make it small and put it over there. All right, very cool, very simple. And you basically just have all your windows open. I'm not gonna open my messages and my email, you'll see random stuff. But you know, you might sit uh, with a Apple TV video up and you might have a web browser in your email uh, and things like that. Now, I do wanna bring up some typing. So let's bring up notes and let's create a new note. And now the thing here is, now there's a couple of ways you can type. Okay, so uh, we can look at the letters. So H E L O oh, back L O and return. I can move more returns. I can actually type type on the keyboard. I find it easier to bring it closer to you, and I can just go right. Or I can go, hello there, how are you today? Oh, I started too soon. Let's go back. Whoa, 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 whoa! Stop that off. <laughs> Ah, dictation, so good. Let's do it again, eh? Hello there, how are you today? Great to have your company. Honestly, you would dictate if you were doing much more than a very basic note or message. So control-wise, it is so easy to pick up. 
Uh, the couple of people I've, I've given the opportunity to use it have totally picked it up with just one quick ex explanation of the pinch, the pinch to control. So I look at one thing, and, and it's so accurate. If you look at all these photos I've got here, which I can zoom in and out on, right? So we're going to go in on the planes, right? And I'm now, this is going to be hard to say, but right in the middle of the screen, I'm staring at a plane that is actually not properly in shot. So I'm going to stare at that, and look at that. See, that's the plane I was looking at. It wasn't properly in shot. And now... When I bring up one photo, if I'm looking at the main photo, I can flick between it very easily. I can pinch and zoom. But if I look down, just like on your phone, if I look down at the main kind of roll, I can see them all. Great plane spotting location, by the way, down at sitting here. Um, excellent, really love it. Um, so that those controls are fantastic. I'm a, I'm a massive fan of just generally how you control the device and the fact that they've created a controlless um, AR VR headset. Fascinatingly, I watched back the, the announcement of the Vision Pro and Tim Cook did use the term augmented reality multiple times when he announced the Vision Pro and now he describes it in my interview with him which you can also see um, here. Um, he described it only as spatial computing which is fascinating. Um, the thing you'll notice about all those examples I give you there is the quality. The menu quality is outstanding. It's, it's really quite remarkable, the quality of what you're looking at. It's really only the pass-through that changes that. And perhaps that's a good thing. Perhaps it's good that there's a, a difference in quality so you know the difference between reality and, and not. Uh, let's talk App Store. I'll, I'll put it back on so that we can explore the App Store together. Um, and so when you put it back on, it, it comes back on almost immediately. Um, and I'm now thinking, what happened to my screen recording of, uh, that I was giving you? But I hope it worked. <laughs> um, I can check that by going to the photo library, uh, going back, scrolling out, out, scroll all the way down, all the way down, and hopefully... There it is. That's the screen recording I just did. Unbelievable. All right, so we're going to go to the App Store. All right, so App Store. Now, I don't think this is brilliantly designed. I think there's work that can be done here, but that may be because it's still very young. Now, we have to put ourselves in the perspective that this is kind of like the App Store on the iPhone in, in 2008. It's, it, there's not a lot. There are around two to 3,000 Vision Pro apps, and then there are a million iPad apps. So if you go to search for something, or if you're in a category, you'll, you'll find apps that are uh, made for iPad, and that's what they'll say. So it's probably better to browse things, because if you go into their collections, they're always going to highlight the, um, the apps that are made for Vision Pro. And I'll go through a lot of these in a moment, but uh, basically, the question around app availability is that when you're in here, you need to be you need to be cautious that you're not ending up with just an app that was made for iPad. So basically, you've got a mix in the in the App Store of see here, designed for iPad, designed for iPad, designed for iPad. Those are going to come up as a window. They're not going to be in, in any way using the spatial experience to uh, to give you the Vision Pro uh, sense of things, but. They still work, and it means you can you can watch them and, and do the things uh, that are listed uh, that you would normally do on your um, on your iPad or other things. Now, the big thing people talk about are the environments. You can either choose to be in the real world, or you can bring in a whole new environment, which is to say, I want to be on Mars, or I want to be in the bush, or wherever I want to be, and that allows you to essentially switch off and focus on something else. So. Again, let me show you. Um, we will, oh, I better, I've got to remember every time to make sure I, I do a screen record. Uh, we go up the top, we go to control center, we hit screen record. Um, so now, anytime you're on any part of this thing, you can simply twist the digital crown and this mountains thing comes up. And the more you twist it, the more of your room becomes the environment that you're in. Okay, so if I look all the way around now, I'm in this environment. And if I go on the main menu to environments here, these are all the available environments that exist. 
it's pretty awesome. Uh, there's some that'll be really exciting to try out. Um, I think, where are we, Yosemite now? But I gotta tell you, the moon is wild. Look at this. So I can, I can look anywhere, and this is a great thing, it recognizes your hands. I can look anywhere. I'm, I'm inclined to sit my chair that swivels and just sit in a room and, exp and just enjoy this environment. So this is a way of kind of going, I want to block out the world, I just want to do my work or productivity, whatever it is I want to do, and, and dial that in. So basically I can dial this in so it's dial it back, I can dial it in so it's, it's just the moon here that blocks out the TV and stuff or whatever. Um, now when you're in this environment, if someone walks into the room, what happens is it creates a kind of hollow cutout of, of that person's space and you can see them. So the pass through is opened up by someone coming into your field of view, um, which is essentially how, how it works. And that's, um, yeah, that's a really, really cool, simple thing. Um, I, wanna, I wanna show you, I wanna talk about a couple other things. I'll just stop this screen recording, even though it does it automatically. Um, so we all are used, we used to have touch ID, uh, then we had face ID, and now we have optic ID. So basically there are, Cameras within the lenses, I don't know, that are looking at your eyeballs, right? Woo! And that's how they know where you're looking. But they also are able to identify your eyes. And that's how you validate purchases. So when I go to an app store and purchase something, it goes optic ID, and then you double click the side button. That's how you validate purchases now. So that's pretty cool, and that's a new thing to get used to. I can't, I hope to have recorded, but I can't guarantee I will have. Um, the FaceTime uh, uh, usability on this because it's pretty cool. Now a basic FaceTime call, someone appears as a face on a screen and they're there and you can chat to them. What they see of you is your persona, which is a cartoon caricature style of you in a realistic way. I say cartoony because it doesn't look real, but it looks close to real. Now I set mine up originally, I haven't looked at how to reset it up, but I will. Um, I set it up probably not in the best lit room, I was in a hurry, I'm like, this is awesome. And so uh, Stephen said to me, I looked a bit, um, I looked a bit pale, so you know, I need to adjust the skin tones. But basically, it creates a real you, and when you smile on a FaceTime call, the person sees you smile. But forget that. When you've got multiple people in a FaceTime call, and this is genuinely a potential use in a corporate scenario. When you've got lots of people on a uh, FaceTime call. Um, you go into spatial mode, and the people that are on Apple Vision Pro become 3D people around you. If you sit and watch a movie together, they're in a line. If you're in a, just a standard spatial mode, they're sitting around a table. When the person here talks, this ear is where you hear it. When the person here talks, this is where you hear it. And it, I've got to be honest, it's the best use of personas is actually in FaceTime spatial mode. So if you're looking for some sort of um, remote work um, collaboration style tool. This is very exciting. And I did notice that um, uh, Zoom is one of the productivity apps that's available, but I haven't done any Zoom calls because it would have exposed the fact that I had it and that would have been a naughty thing to do. Um, the other thing you can do, and I didn't try this until um, a, a bit late into the, into, the, into the go, but I was just getting my kids to try it and I gave them my PIN number to, to log in. But there's a guest user. So what you can do as the user of the Vision Pro is you can go into the control uh, center. That when you look up, you bring up this little menu. And you can click guest user. And then you can choose, do you want them to have access to the apps that you've got open or just all your apps? So you could set up three windows, go to guest user mode, and then hand it over to them. And you've got to hand it over within five minutes. And what that does, and it's a much better way to do it if you're going to demonstrate it, because when you set up the Vision Pro for the first time, it scans your hands so it can see and understand your hands. And then it scans your eyes, there's a whole range of tests. So it sets up the correct eye tracking, um, it sets up the correct hand tracking, and if you're gonna get someone else to use it, make sure you use guest mode. Now, I got vision of a bunch of apps that I enjoyed using, and I wanna run through some of them. One of the better, um, one of the better augmented reality apps I saw was the PGA. Now the PGA, what I did was I brought up uh, a leaderboard. And for some of the holes, I'm gonna say maybe six to eight of the 18 holes, there was this green line above the hole. You click on that, that hole and it loads that hole in a 3D rendered real, like beautiful rendition of the hole. And then you see his shots, one, two, three. So you can see where he placed the ball and how he got the score he did on that hole. 
I, that that uh, Formula One demo that I showed, or it was a, it was a um, sample or a, um, a concept, uh, a good year, maybe not quite a year ago now, but you know, some months ago, feels like it should be a reality because this is exactly it. I want the track here, so we're we're probably a way away from that happening, but it's it's already an idea. The NBA season's already ended, so I played with the app, but it, meh. It just shows your games now, but apparently you can do multi-screen while the season's on. The MB MLB app, which I love, just shows your games while they're live. Um, but we need to think about the potential there for sport. The potential is, and it's kind of disappointing that, well, that not that I know of, that um, there's no amazing uh, plan for this for Stan or Nine Now with the Olympics. But I would wear this at 11 o'clock at night, 4 o'clock in the morning, watching the Olympics because I could go right. I'm going to put the swimming heats on there. I'm going to put the rowing over there. I'm going to put the weightlifting there. Like, let's put four or five screens up. They've got 40 channels of content. Let's put lots of them up. Let's put them around the room so I can just enjoy it. Then you add in the data overlay, and this thing becomes very, very interesting. So I think that's where we kind of think, whoa, hang on, what's next? Fruit Ninja is awesome because it really uses your environment. You know, flapping away at the fruit and trying to, trying to win, the, win the game. And you, when you're learning it, it teaches you different tricks. And there's one where you can have uh, like ninja stars where you throw them. And it's so good because it interacts with your environment. A ninja starred around and some of them landed on the TV and in the walls and they stay there. So there's that mix of it's a game, but then I'm interacting. Like the ninja stars that I threw went through a fruit and then hit the wall and stayed there. What is happening? Uh, no, that's an Aussie app. Jig Space is another Aussie app, very much an uh, um, enterprise app. Uh, where companies build what they call jigs, which is a 3D model, and they use these jigs to teach people about whatever the model is. And so the two great examples are the Formula One car. Jig Space is a sponsor of the Steak uh, Sauber Formula One team and the uh, jet engine. And you put the jet engine in your room and you can walk around it. And what happens is you stare at a part and you can click and pull it apart. So you just literally pull it apart piece by piece. You can step through and learn about the product. So it teaches you about a jet engine. It's a very good example of high quality, and I mean legit outstanding quality, um, 3D rendering in the Apple Vision Pro. Immersive video is available in the Apple TV Plus or the Apple TV app, and it's, it's something you must experience because it shows you what's possible uh, in, in the years ahead. Now, they're only just rolling out cameras for this stuff. They're only just working out where to use this, but in, in live sport, uh, in in adventure, in exploring, it's phenomenal. These things are overwhelming. It is so good to watch that you can see Apple's vision for the Apple Vision Pro when you try those things. And I noticed there's a lot of uh, 3D movies that appear in, in the store as well. So I watched The Lion King on Disney Plus and it came through in 3D. So make the screen really big and you get that 3D depth. Pretty good way to watch a movie. But there is a problem, there is a lack of apps. So you can't get Netflix, you can't even get Stan. Um, now they're iPad apps, so I don't know why they haven't been ticked off as being available on the Apple Vision Pro. They must need to do something as a developer to say we've, we've worked this out. But I think there is a distinct lack of apps. That sounds ridiculous, but that's the Apple Vision Pro's biggest problem, which is also its biggest challenge and opportunity. So lack of apps is its problem. It's a challenge because developers can build apps that we've never thought of before. And it's its opportunity because that is exactly what's going to make the Vision Pro a success. Someone's going to come up with an idea that we didn't think of, we wouldn't have thought of, and it's going to be mind-blowing. Now, I do think sport's going to be a driver of this. Like, imagine, you know, gamble responsibly, folks, but imagine KO or Stan or whatever allow you to put multiple things up. Now, right now, if you're playing an Apple TV Plus video and you launch the MLB, it'll stop one video and do the other. I need it to do whatever I want. I need it to let me stream three or four things at a time from different apps. That'd be amazing. I'd put the MLB over there, the NBA there, the rugby league there, the supercars there or whatever. And then you might have your sports bet there or something, you know, and yeah, you, just, you make your own sports bar. For someone that lives alone or doesn't have an 85 or 100 inch TV, this is a wild experience. It's phenomenal, but that's its, that's its requirement. Apple needs developers to make this happen. Now, just finally, the big thing, if you're a Mac user, if you've got a MacBook especially, it's very cool. So you sit there, you get your Mac out, and you say, right, I want to mirror the screen. Now, I've, you find yourself initially going, I'm going to put the screen above 
like my Mac. But actually what you should do is you bring the virtual screen down to essentially the bottom of the, the, the top of the keyboard so that you can still type and you're not looking up like this to use it. And it's great, but it is only a single screen. With Vision Pro OS 2, you're gonna be able to have bigger screens and a range of different things. That's a requirement because I felt like there wasn't a huge advantage other than being able to easily see it. But when you're using your Mac in this way, right? You got your Mac there. One of the things you do in kind of intuitively with a, with a one screen is you put, you know, your messages and your mail and stuff. Because you can use the Mac mirroring and then the Vision Pro apps can sit side by side. You can put your Mac mirror and you can have your emails and you can have your text and you can have your music. So actually you are multi-screened, you're multi-computed. You're using multiple computers at the same time. One of them is on your face, the others, other is sitting in front of you and you can use that keyboard. Look. I've loved it, it's great. But my overall views on it haven't changed. It's the most remarkable piece of technology I've ever used, but I don't know what we need it for and I can't wait to find out. Um, is it comfortable? Yes. Do I feel like it's laboring on the top of my head and not being kind of shouldered across my whole face? Yes, like I feel like it, I actually feel like it's, it's bent up and it, and it needs to sit, I don't know. You can muck around with the fittings all you like, but I still end up like the my forehead's taking most of the weight, which maybe is the intent. And I think about an hour and a half was my longest session because frankly, I don't I don't love it as a Mac screen. I've got big screen. I'm, here's the problem. I'm lucky. I've got big monitors and big TVs. I started watching a movie the other day in my at my home. It was like, let's say 250 inch screen. Then I went, I've got a hundred inch TV. What am I doing? I don't have the discomfort of wearing an Apple Vision Pro. So I think it depends on your circumstance. I don't think, and I'm pretty confident, there's not gonna be lines around the block for this thing. But I do think there are going to be people who absolutely love this in their lives. I think businesses should have one, use one, play with one, one test one, and find the next big thing from it. Uh, but I don't think the average Joe should even think about spending $6,000 on something that can, can do these things unless you've got that money really super disposable because it's a lot of money. And I think I spoke to uh, Zach Duff from Jigspace uh, and it's on the EFTM podcast next week, or this week, sorry. Um, he said, Apple doesn't do something like this unless they've been at it for 10 years and they've got a 10 year plan or something like that, I'm paraphrasing. And so you really need to sit back and use the term vision and go, what's Apple's vision? Is their vision this? No. Apple's vision is spatial computing. Apple's vision is, I've got this here, this here, that there. It's all good. You can just tap it, go with it, right? This is the Apple Vision Pro. Imagine the next one is just the Apple Vision. And there's, there's less sensors. It's not as responsive. Maybe it only works sitting down. Oh, I don't know. And it's half the price maybe more. But then fast forward, I'm just looking on the desk here thinking, what if this was Apple's vision? This is a set of sunglasses from audio brand JBL that plays sound. Then you've got Ray-Ban through Meta that have sunglasses that can see for you and respond to you. What if some of what the Apple Vision Pro can do might be miniaturized into a Google Glass style environment? I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. Uh, it's a phenomenal product. I, here's my number one thing. I encourage you to book an appointment and go and have a look. Just go and play with it at the Apple Store. They'll give you a very good uh, demo. I think the demo is 10 to 15 minutes. And it's exceptional. And it's worth doing so that you can experience it. Just so you can say to people that you know what it is. And you can think about whether or not one day in your life you might be using something like the Apple Vision Pro. <laughs>